Um, I am Nico, um, a engineer at Oasis Labs. Um, so I used to be a student uh, at UC Berkeley with John Song, and um, it's a research in privacy and And um, so John started Oasis Labs to uh, bring those things to the blockchain, and so I've been working there for about a year now. Um, this is my first DevCon and I'm super excited to be here. Um, so yeah, let's talk about uh, what we're going to do today. So I wanted to give like a short five to ten minute spiel about uh, what Oasis does and why what we're doing is important in our eyes. Um, and then we'll jump straight into the workshop where I'm going to show you how to build Can you on... speak louder, please? Oh, sorry. Thank you. We're um, going to show you how to build on Oasis. Um, and then uh, after that, we're going to show you where we want to go with building on Oasis. Um, so yeah, so this is a workshop. And so to download our developer tools, um, it should be at docs.oasis.dev slash start. Um, so there's going to be a few things that will be shown. Uh, the only thing that's important is this first plan uh, over here. So that's just to install our Oasis toolchain. And so yeah, so I'm going to let people do that. And hopefully everybody will be set up by the time I finish talking. Awesome. So a little bit about why Oasis is actually important. Um, so data breaches have been super popular um, over the last decade or more. And that's because a lot of data is in the hands of centralized companies, uh, Fortune 500 companies that have a lot of personal data. And either intentionally or by accident, they often link this data. Um, so by a show of hands, how many people here have or use Facebook? Right. So it seems like most people. Um, how many people trust Facebook? <coughs> Almost nobody. And uh, a survey they did showed that basically everybody, uh, very few people trust Facebook, and many people that leave Facebook do so entirely because of trust reasons. Um, so how does the Oasis blockchain help fix uh, issues with data privacy? So we help you build decentralized applications on the blockchain with the added guarantees of uh, privacy and security and confidentiality. Not that just at all. Um, so the major issues that are there um, with standard centralized models are first of all untrusted infrastructure. Uh, you need to trust uh, whatever cloud you're using and the underlying infrastructure. And you also need to trust the applications that are built on top of them. Uh, together these two um, things that you have to trust lead to all sorts of undesirable data leakages and um, that is obviously bad. Uh, Oasis fixes this by using the blockchain. Uh, we have our own uh, layer one solution that we're hoping is scalable and that is combined with secure hardware and other um, confidentiality, confidentiality preserving um, trusted execution environments that uh, make executing these smart contracts um, confidential. So the nodes that execute it um, can't see the data that they're computing. Uh, we'll get more into that in a minute. Uh, but together, these things enable um, general purpose computation, including but not limited to privacy preserving um, analytics and machine learning. Um, so I'm sure everybody here is quite familiar with the guarantees that smart contracts give you. Uh, but just for a quick overview, the things that the security properties they give you are high integrity, um, high availability, and also immutability. Um, but these things uh, don't give you privacy. Um, things on the blockchain are transparent. And that problem is solved by Oasis um, with secure enclaves. Um, so what is a secure enclave? It's a black box that's run on an untrusted machine. So in this case, a node in the blockchain. Um, so at a high level, what happens is um, the untrusted machines in the blockchain will allocate a section of their memory that they no longer have access to and configure
configure it correctly with whatever program needs to be run. And they will prove to you as a remote user of their machine that whatever their configuration is to be able to successfully run your program without actually seeing uh, that data has been configured correctly. And you receive a verifiable cryptographic process. Um, once that happens, you can send encrypted data into this black box, which again, um, that um, untrusted node or nodes aren't able to see inside. Um, the data is decrypted inside by a key that's provided, provisioned by our uh, decentralized key manager. And then the results are re-encrypted and spit out, um, so only you can um, read them. Um, during this entire process, um, there was never a point at which any of the nodes running uh, these black boxes were able to see inside. Um, so yeah, so right now um, what we use is Intel SGX, um, and that comes with its own set of problems, um, namely uh, being Intel proprietary, and there's a bunch of other various uh, security vulnerabilities. And we also hope to support um, the Keystone Enclave, which is a research project that works super closely with Oasis. Um, and that's going to be an open source um, hardware enclave that is going to um, be more heavily publicly audited, audited. And it has a bunch of other benefits, such as dynamic memory allocation. One of the performance issues we face with uh, the current Intel SGX is has to do with memory limitations. Um, memory limitations around actually setting up these um, enclaves since they're um, limited in memory. Um, so yeah, so how do you actually interact uh, with these write programs that can be consumed within a secure enclave in a reproducible form? Um, so that gets into um, WASI, which is um, the WebAssembly system interface. Uh, so to understand WASI, uh, we first need to understand WASM. So WASM is WebAssembly. It's uh, an environment agnostic um, language that's used on uh, mostly in your browser. And it is agnostic because the way it interacts with your environment is strictly through APIs. And on the web, where we already have web APIs, um, that's pretty straightforward. Um, but in general environments, there, until now, didn't really exist any standard APIs. Um, so WASM wasn't as portable as it should be. Um, so WASI fixes this. Um, it's, an, it's a project uh, that's developed by um, WASM Time. And what it is, it's a syscall-like API. Uh, where any generic platform can interact with WASM. And we use this within um, secure enclaves to actually be able to have a portable and general purpose way of communicating. Um, so yeah, so the Oasis blockchain, along with many other people, are now adopting WASI. And um, so yeah, let's dig into a little bit about more about what it does. Um, so to compare it to the EVM, uh, the EVM has some properties that make it really nice and portable, uh, currently. Uh, so it's deterministic, uh, cross-platform, uh, sandboxed, and it's current complete slash general purpose. Uh, WebAssembly is all of these things as well, uh, but it was not cross-platform. Uh, but with WASI, it actually is now. Um, so yeah, so the syscall interface gives you a bunch of things. You can interact with environment variables or your file system uh, with these syscalls. And um, yeah, it has a capability-based software model, and it's modular. You only have to implement exactly the syscalls uh, that you want for your platform. And uh, yeah, so we feel that WASI and blockchain are a really good match for one another. Um, in particular, for running blo blockchain computations, you need, to, you need to support a few different things. Um, for storage, which you can think of as a key value store, um, you need to be able to read and write files. Um, for RPCs in our system, um, similar, similarly, you need to be able to read uh, write files and also read environment variables. Um, for entropy, you need um, to be able to have some sort of source of randomness. And for timing, you need um, some clock um, syscalls 
And so WASI provides all of these. Um, so how does OASIS let you um, do all of this in a super abstract, high-level um, development kit? Well, we have an OASIS SDK, which I'm going to show you during the workshop in a minute. Um, so it comes with a bunch of things. It comes with a command line interface, which is similar to Drupal and you can use to um, build and, and compile and deploy um, your um, projects on Oasis. We have a gateway that lets you deploy to the Oasis network, and we also have some really nice Rust libraries um, that can be used to develop. Uh, and coming soon, we have a few additional development kits that uh, I'm pretty excited about. Uh, in particular, um, the Data Privacy API uh, and the Open Finance Dev Kit. Um, so the Open Finance Dev Kit is going to let you build DeFi apps super easily, and the Data Privacy API is going to be a way by which um, you as a user can share your data uh, with people that want to consume it and receive results without ever exposing your data to those parties that might be writing out of those. Um, and again, that all ties back to secure hardware and execution side of it. Okay, so this is an overview of how the network actually works. So you're going to be able to initialize, um, build, and um, run programs with the command line, and um, deploy to our network through um, the Oasis client, um, which is very similar to um, Web3. And once you deploy using your client, um, transactions will be sent um, through either the Web3 gateway or a Oasis gateway that we're working on, um, which is actually already open source. Um, we're just trying to get, get it to a stable state right now. Um, and so yeah, so when you execute transactions to the gateway, they get sent to the Oasis network, where our runtime will consume your WASM binary, and any, um, any transactions that are executed will happen within that secure offer. Nice, okay. So um, let's go ahead and actually get to the workshops. So um, yeah, so demo gods allowing, uh, things will work. Okay, um, let's see how I can get this to be. Do people want to backseat this? Cool. All right, so to actually um, create a contract on Oasis, super simple. I uh, just type Oasis in it and then the name of what I want to build. Uh, so today we're going to build a calculator. Cool. So now um, I have a calculator initialized. And so what does that calculator actually have? Um, so we need two parts. There's two sides to this. We need a service. Um, so we need a service where um, I can define my actual contract, and then an app from where I can actually interact with um, that service once it's deployed, and um, execute RPCs and all of that. Um, so what this service is, is it's a standard Rust service. Um, Rust is our language of choice um, currently. And so all of the code is going to live inside of this main.rs file, uh, for those of you that are following along. Um, so in main.rs, you'll see that a bunch of code is already going to be initialized for you. And this, for the most part, is going to look exactly like a normal Rust service. Um, there's two things that you have to add um, as you're implementing. Um, there is both a, you need to define state and you need ways to modify state. And so state definition happens inside uh, up here. Um, you define a struct. For this calculator, we're not actually going to have any state, but if you wanted to, um, this is where you do it. You just add um, variables here. Um, so to actually define ways to interact with a state and um, do stuff, that happens within this implementation here. Um, so import calculator. So you'll notice that there's two things. There's a constructor that's empty. Um, you can add constructor variables here and do what you will. Uh, there's also a default RPC uh, contract call that we define. Um, all it does is it 
leads in um, your your address, and it um, will execute that reference. Um, we're going to replace this and make it actually function like a calculator. Um, so the fun first function we're going to implement is add. Uh, what do we want to add? We want to add two floats together. Uh, let's call them A and B. And their sum is going to be a float as well. Um, so to return in Rust, all you need to do is have the last line be return a parent. You return A plus B. All right, so keeping it simple, I'm just going to do a few more of these. Uh, have a subtract, multiply, and a divide. Nice. Uh, so to subtract, minus. Cool. So that was pretty simple. Now we have four RPCs defined, and this is going to be a fully functional smart contract that will let us do any of the four basic operations. Um, and so you'll, you might notice that there's also some code down here. Um, this is how you unit test your service. Um, so we have a Oasis test library that lets you actually um, test your service um, before you deploy it anywhere. Um, so what it does is it creates a, um, an account for you, and then now you can use that account to create one of these context objects. Which again, if you're familiar with Solidity, context is exactly the same as message. Uh, you can do context.sender, context.value, um, all that stuff. Um, yeah, so then now using that context, we initialize the calculator. Uh, we'll also can actually call it calculator. All right, and then now the only test we have is not really a test. Uh, it just prints out the result of saying hello. Um, let's actually make some tests. Um, so in Rust, you do that with this assert eq macro. Uh, so we have add. Um, we want to add, let's say, 10 and 5. And we want the result of that to be 15. And similarly, uh, we can have the same kind of stuff um, for subtract, uh, multiply, and divide. Um, yeah, so you also need to provide context, so um, let's provide some pointers to the context. <coughs> and that should be it. Now we should have fully functioning unit tests for this service that we've written. That is going to va like validate um, each of these methods that we've written. Um, how do we actually go ahead and build this. Um, so let's go ahead and check out that. Uh, let's go into that service directory that we built. Um, and from our CLI, just run this is built. And hopefully that will work. It might take a minute. Um, so while that's going ahead and compiling, I'm going to talk to you a bit about how how exactly what we've built here differs from a standard Rust service. Um, and there's a few things. So of course there's that um, there's that context that I talked about. So every method that you define needs to have this context as uh, part of the method signature. Um, and that's just so um, all, all of the information about sender and value and all that can be um, The other difference is this uh, derive Rate annotation and that handles um, message parsing for persisting things to uh, Oasis platform storage and this like loading and storing stuff when you actually have uh, things within your state. Um, so the final difference um, is this main method which has a service macro and so running Oasis build uh, that tells us that stuff is um, so that tells uh, running Oasis build to actually um, build the WASM uh, binary file that we want. And that's what we're going to be running inside of Beyond. Okay, so it seems that this compiled. Um, there are a few warnings. Uh, we can ignore those. Um, those are because we don't actually use context anymore. Now that we have that, uh, you can run those unit tests that we wrote by running Oasis test. Nice. So that'll take an extra second and we'll pass. 
Ah, yes. So the tests have failed because I didn't change the values. So let's go ahead and do that. 10 minus 5 is 15. 10 times 5 is 50. Uh, 10 divided by 5 is 15. Yeah. Okay. So now when I test it, there we go. It passed. Um, I'm going to get rid of these warnings too, so they annoy me. There we go. So, test passed, everything is nice. So, now that we have this working service that's ready to deploy, um, how do we actually deploy it inside of an application? Um, so, let's go to this app directory now, and you'll see this um, other file structure. Um, you can build out whatever app you want really in here. Um, we have a couple examples on our website. Um, but for actually testing that uh, deploying and making contract calls work, everything you want to do is inside this message code. Uh, where we have a service.spec.ts file. Um, so you go ahead and open that up. It's going to have a basic default test. Um, so here I'm going to cheat a bit and take some, um, like replace it with some stuff. Um, so what I've replaced here is just um, our, by default, it connects to our production uh, developer gateway, the uh, OSIS gateway. Uh, here, I just changed it to point to um, a Web3 gateway, and that way we can actually see um, transaction logs inside of our terminal. So, how do you actually configure the stuff? Uh, first, you have a mnemonic that you specify. Uh, once you specify the mnemonic, uh, you also want to specify a pointer to um, where that local chain is going to be running. Uh, so I guess now is a good time to actually show you how to run that local chain. Uh, so going back to the terminal, uh, again, super simple, uh, as you expect. Oasis chain should get that up and running for you. And so now you'll see that this is pretty much exactly the same as the Ganache CLI. Uh, it just creates a bunch of accounts for you. And now it's listening for transactions that have happened against it. Um, so going back here, now we've connected to that chain. And using that mnemonic, we create a wallet. Um, so this is exactly the same as an Ethers DS wallet. And with that wallet, you create a instance of a local Web3 gateway. Uh, what that gateway is going to do is it connects to that local chain we initialized, and it's going to sign transactions that it sends with that wallet you created. Uh, for deploying a calculator instance, now um, you have to provision it, you provide it with that uh, byte code that was created. Um, so, oh, I guess I, I, I forgot to mention that. So, when you compiled your service with Oasis build, uh, inside this target directory, uh, a calculator.wasm file was generated. And so, we're just reading in that bytecode and uh, passing it to your uh, deploy function here. Um, and so that should now deploy your calculator and create a calculator instance. Um, and with when you initialize your repository with the way it's in it, that also generated this basic um, test of deploy. So just make sure that after you deploy, uh, whatever service that you created is not um, null, it now actually is a running service. So um, that's not all we want. We also want to be able to uh, test the four calculator contract calls we wrote. Um, so let's, well, let's do that. Um, we want an add test. Um, so how do we actually add? Um, all you do is use the four calculator instance um, and add. So we want to add same numbers, 10 and 5, and then we want the sum to be equal to 15. Um, do the same thing for the other methods. Um, so you can subtract, um, multiply, and divide. So um, just to change what's happening. Um, so, so there we go. So 
now we have full tests that are running. Uh, we have our local chain running, and now let's actually test the test. Let's make sure that we work. Um, let's do that. Let's do that. Test. Uh, that'll take a second, and uh, it'll build uh, the client side and the JDX side. Um, so, are there any questions so far while I'm testing it? Oh, yeah, that is a good point. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, so it, like, um, it's, it's based on that. It's very similar. We can, like, modify it to be able to handle Exactly what I showed you in that auto-generated um, file in your <coughs> directory. Um, it reads from standard in, and it decodes from C4, and then whatever it decoded, it checks what method is being called, 
it calls the appropriate method out of the set of methods you define. Um, that happens in this block here. And once you've actually uh, figured out what method is being called, it calls that method with the arguments provided through standard in. Um, after computing that, again, it writes to standard out. And <clears throat> so C and C++ are languages that compile to WASM and um, have SDKs for compiling them to WASI. And so that's exactly what um, happened here. Um, so the exact steps I can show you in this link file. So first we compile um, using a the WASI SDK, which is an which is a publicly available SDK for compiling um, things to WASI compliant on WASM. Um, second thing that we did was uh, now that we compiled this file, uh, the way Oasis expects um, compiled WASM files to be. It needs to have uh, the IDL uh, interface definition language, which is the equivalent of Ethereum's ADI. It exp expects that to be baked into this block. Um, so this second step here, uh, we convert our base calculator WASM file uh, into a service that's deployable to the OSS network. Um, how does that work? Um, well, so that's super easy with Rust. Rust has a library for modifying and adding stuff to WASM file work. Um, so all we do is you take um, you take your initial WASM file that was built, and you essentially graph on a IDL. Uh, that IDL is something that I just uh, you, know, you have to generate manually right now. And we're hoping to build a tooling that will just make all of these steps that I've explained um, super easy. But once that's done, uh, you now have a calculator dot uh, calculator service that was awesome. and this is something that can actually um, run inside the and be totally fine on our platform. Uh, so to integration test with that, uh, then that comes to this last file, um, which should look exactly like that unit test that we discussed um, for the Rust calculator, uh, where we configure and set up a gateway. Um, using by pointing it to the local chain and um, driving the wallet when you want it. Uh, then you deploy by pointing it to that um, WASM file, and then it's going to do just all any of the functions that you want to do. Yeah, um, so now uh, going back here, so that hopefully showcases like how simple it is to write code in any language that can be converted to WASM in a form that OASIS can interpret it. Um, so that's actually what we're hoping to do. We have our tooling and stuff to do things cleanly and easily with Rust. And OASIS is actually backwards compatible with um, Solidity and Viper as well. Um, so uh, this demo for C++ that I showed you, we're hoping to actually, at some point in the near future, extend it to support really anything that can compile to WASM, and that will come in time. Uh, we want to have like some developer grant programs to for people that are really passionate or uh, interested in any of these languages um, to help us build out these tools. Uh, so if you're interested in that, like, please talk to me after. Um, but yeah, so I guess like the vision here is that uh, right now it feels like a lot of um, things are pushing blockchain to replace existing infrastructure, um, but the, the idea here is that um, existing infrastructure should be able to remain largely the same and then just add a, with like minimal modification, it should now be able to be run on blockchain uh, in like a platform with a diagnostic way. Um, so yeah, it's code everything. Um, so where is Oasis now? Um, have released a few SDKs, um, such as that tooling that I that we've gone through today. Um, our DevNet is live, and we are now uh, planning to have a public testnet soon, uh, probably within the next couple of weeks. Um, along with that, there will be a bug bounty, and um, so that people that find bugs will um, receive prizes. Um, and soon, in the next month or so, we're also going to be having a staking competition for people that are interested in joining the network and running nodes. 
Um, and we're going to have a lot of support for that, um, like developer support, web app worker support for that as well. Um, so this staking competition is going to be totally open. If you want more information, like go to our protocol website, uh, oasisprotocol.org, or follow us on Twitter. And so for people that are able to successfully attack um, open tokens, and um, you can also contribute um, through community contribution. You can write like blog posts about us and that kind of stuff, and win tokens as well. Um, so yeah, that'll be, that'll be exciting. Um, so yeah, there's a few links here for our website, um, from GitHub and our Twitter. Um, so yeah, so if people have any, if people have tried to follow along the tutorial and you got stuck at any point, uh, the rest of this time is for me to help you um, finish building the calculator.